How's it going? Welcome to another All About RVs. I'm Jared Gillis, and today we're gonna to be talking about what we have in our toolkit. I've been asked often, uh, what do we have in our toolkit to keep the RV working and running well, that and the truck. So let's grab the tool bag. This is my main tool bag, and we'll go over the things that are in here that might just be specific to me because of the things that I like to do and uh, things that I think are essential for RVers to have. Now, starting off, we'll start with some essentials. Now, these are like channel lock pliers. They have like a tongue and a groove so you can put them at different positions. These come in handy for a lot of different things. Uh, for a scenario, like if you put your, your water hose on and you go to disconnect it the next day and it kind of seized up on there and you just can't get it off, rather than cutting your hose and having to buy a new one at the next place, you can use something like this to be able to get that hose off of the spigot so that you can leave again. So these are an essential for RVers out there. Now, we also have like a, a multi-use screwdriver. So this one, they make these like a, a nine in one and that's the kind that I would recommend. Uh, something that you can have like a Phillips head, a standard screwdriver, be able to flip it around, be able to get to a, a square end on it so that you can use that in the RV because so many RVs, um, they have the, the square Roberts, is it Roberts or Robertson? Either way, it's a square bit drive. And if you had something where you can tighten it up or loosen it if you needed to pull something off, um, being able to have just a, a simple screwdriver that can do multiple different things is an essential to have on the RV. Now, it might be easier if I just kinda go around over here. Um, this is actually an old can of three-in-one oil. This guy has been around a good long while and I use this in a lot of different scenarios. It seems like there's so many projects or things where you just need just a drop or two of oil. As you can see, this thing lasts for a long time. I've had this forever. Uh, but actually, 3-in-1, they have a, a whole lineup of products for RVers, uh, more than just having your general household oil. Let me grab some of those. These have helped me out definitely more than once. Um, this is a rust penetrant. It helps release the rust, um, and that's come in handy while working on the RV and the truck. Uh, but then we have these other ones that are specific to RVing. Uh, this one is a slide-out lubricant, so it's a, going to be a dry lubricant, something that's not going to attract the dirt and the debris so that your slide can keep functioning properly. Uh, this helps kind of protect it, extend the life of it. Um, it's, it's really good to use and it's pretty simple. You just spray it on and uh, after you clean it and it keeps the slide in good condition. Here's another one here, which is the window, uh, the track, and it's a dry lube also. So when you have one of those windows that's just kind of sticking and not opening properly, you can spray this on there and get it operating nice and smooth. Another area that I like to use this oil is uh, I'll use it on the, the door. So if you use it on the, the latch and the strike plate, it's going to keep your door closing easily so that people aren't slamming it to get it to, to latch. So this is one that I actually use quite a bit. And uh, they have a new one that came out not long ago. Um, this is an RV Care rubber seal conditioner. So uh, you can just spray this on your rubber seals around your slide. It's actually a UV protectant. I would rather have quick maintenance than having to replace something like the seals on the RV. So I'll, I'll put a link in the description where you can find all the stuff that we talk about today. Uh, these you can actually even get at Walmart. Now, another big thing that I use for tracking down problems in the RV is a multimeter. Uh, something that I can test for continuity, um, I can test for voltage, so it'll help me diagnose a battery if I'm having a battery issue or a voltage issue somewhere. Um, a good multimeter will help you out a lot. Some of the things in here are just kind of general, like a good hammer being able to put stakes in and out, maybe something that needs a little bit of persuasion. Uh, you can have a hammer for that. Um, I like to have my drill with me, so that way, I, well, I use it for putting our jacks up and down on the RV, and so it comes in handy for that, but then it's useful for so many different things. And um, I actually have a impact driver. This is a little bit overkill. This guy is good because he's nice and tight and small. I can get into tight spaces. Um, so I like to have an in, this guy because he's small. And with that, I would have all the, the bits to be able to go with that. If I needed Torx, Square, Phillips, uh, flathead to go with that. Um, more bits in this. 
And then I also have drill bits to go along with that drill if I needed to drill anything out. Another general thing I like to have is a pry bar. Um, I like to have other kinds of pliers, needle nose pliers. Sometimes you need to get in somewhere tight and a utility knife. So that's a lot of the, the general things that I like to have. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, I also like to have Allen wrenches, uh, two different sets, the standard and the, the metric. Um, I use a torpedo level. Uh, this guy, if we're being able to check level, if we're having issues with a level mate pro or we need to recalibrate it or something, I can use this to get us close and then fine tune it later. That covers most of the things in the bag. I do have a container for hardware and some supplies. This is like a smorgasbord of different things for the RV. So um, I have some general stuff like screws and just some hardware in here. Uh, but this is where I keep my fuses. They're in one spot, I know where to find them. If I blow a fuse in the RV, um, I have electrical tape in here, both black and red. Something that I think every RVer should have is uh, some like a turnabond. This was a real small package that I was able to pick up. Uh, it's like a rubber roof repair. You could use this on the roof. You could use it on the awning if you needed to. Uh, it can really save you in a pinch if you were to have like a tree branch fall on your RV or, or something. You don't have to deal with that roof leak the entire time you can get it patched up. I have a couple fittings in here of PEX. This is a just a push on, shut off if I needed to, say I had a fixture go bad or something like that. PEX is really tough stuff, but if I needed to be able to stop plumbing somewhere, stop the water somewhere, I'm able to push this onto the PEX and be able to work on whatever I needed to work on. You probably don't need this much hardware for your average RVer, but I'm always doing things for solar or testing out different things. So making more cables or MC4 connectors, um, you don't need that for your typical RVer. But having a little bit of hardware, fuses, be able to patch the roof, that comes in handy. I also keep a couple tubes of caulk, one for the sidewalls, uh, ProFlex for RVs, and then since I have an EPDM roof, um, some self-leveling decor. Now, let's take a look at a few of the essential things that I keep inside of the truck. Now, these are things that I like to be able to use when I just have the truck and I may not be by the RV and it makes it easy. So this is a jack that goes with the truck that I've also had to use on the RV when we've been on the road. And then with that, I also have an air pump, a good Vier air pump to go along with that. If I needed to air up the tires, which I've had to, this is just easier if you needed to add air to your RV tires rather than having to go to a fueling station to be able to air your tires back up. Very, very handy to have. Now let's switch to the other side. So on this side, we actually have tools under the seat and behind the seat, underneath the seat. Uh, this is where I keep my wrenches, some of my crescent wrenches, my box wrenches, and all of my socket sets. Having a good set of sockets and being able to disassemble or reassemble or take apart whatever you need to, to fix it is very important. Um, I also have a torque wrench. This is a, a me kind of a thing because I've had issues with over torquing or under torquing things. This helps me set the proper torque on what I need to tighten down. Uh, we have a four way for being able to take the, the lug nuts off of the truck or the RV. We always have the right size and this gives us the, the torque to be able to do it, having a four way to do that. And then back here, we actually don't have too many tools. I do have a foldable shovel. This guy comes in pretty handy in a pinch when you need a shovel. It's not the greatest shovel, but it's a shovel. And then I have a set of jumper cables. You never know if you're going to need the jumper cables or if you need to help somebody out that could use a set of jumper cables to get their car going. Last but not least is I have this big bottle jack uh, it's got a very low profile, which has come in very handy when we've been stuck on the side of the road. Uh, but it lifts, I, I was going to say a ton, it's actually 20 tons. So this has no problem being able to jack up one side of the RV or the other if I need to work on the suspension or change on a wheel, um, replace the tire. This guy does great. Having a jack that can work for your RV is has been important to us. We've used it a lot unfortunately. 
So that's pretty much what we have in our toolkit. A few extra things like hacksaws and vice grips, a couple other things that I forgot to mention in there. I'll put a link down in the description to everything we talked about, everything that I have in my tool bag. Uh, so that way you could check that out. I'll put in there the essential for RVers. I'll put in there what I have, what I like to use, and some of that hardware stuff. So um, again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more about RVing, then uh, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video.